How's everybody doing? As they said, I'm Chef Matt Lewis of Where You At Matt, the uh, Seattle mobile restaurant, better known as a food truck. Uh, if you haven't been, you should go. Uh, this year, we're celebrating 11 years in business. So quite the milestone. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that you look back on. It's like, wow, 11 years already, but couldn't do it without you guys. I'm sure some of you guys have been supporters. If not, we look forward to you being future supporters. Uh, and also, happy Juneteenth. Uh, I'm looking forward to this uh, because it's summertime and there's nothing like summer in Seattle. We always pay the price of the gray days through the winter uh, to get to the days like we're having right now. Um, and you may ask, like, picnics, Juneteenth, you know, what, what, what goes hand in hand? Well, the older I get, the more I eat more plant-based fresh ingredients, uh, less heavy things. I always call it now meat is a treat. Like I'm not going to say I don't eat meat. Uh, cause if you see me out and there's crispy fried chicken or, you know, chicken wing on the menu, I'm all about it. But for the most part, um, I like to eat, you know, what's fresh, clean, and everything else. So uh, without further ado, we'll kind of jump into this. If you have questions, feel free to use the chat. Um, I think there, we have uh, someone moderating that. Um, and then at the end, I think we can actually do a question and answer time. Um, but welcome to my kitchen here. Today, we're going to do a watermelon salad. Uh, it's actually one of my favorites. Um, these cute little watermelons here as these come into season. And then after that, we're going to get into the fresh corn. Down south where I'm from in New Orleans, like corn is kind of your, our asparagus up here, where when you start seeing that corn, you know it's summertime because it's hot down there. Um, and all the Gulf Coast states will always say, my corn's the best, my corn's the best. Well, I always have a feeling that, you know, there's a lot of crossover and it's just kind of that, that fun little rivalry that we all benefit from. So we'll do a fresh corn salad, we'll do a watermelon salad, and we will begin. If you can't find these cute little ones, get the big one, right? Um, but sometimes when you have that half of a big one and you get home and you wanna use it, or you wanna take it on a picnic, here's a way to kind of dress it up. Uh, the easiest way to get into this, to utilize it for our purposes, is we just set it on a board. We're going to just take the tip off here on both sides until you get to the red, as you can see that. So that's good. I'm going to do that on the other side, like so. And now this watermelon will stand up. These two you can discard. There's some things you can do with it too. You can actually pickle the rind. That's a whole another class that we'll get into. But now that you see it stands on its own, you have the red center. What I'm going to do is take my knife and take the rind, the rest of the rind off here. So I will insert where the uh, red and the white intersect here and then kind of follow the curve of the watermelon. So I'll go in and straight down. And now that we have that, now you follow this all the way around, taking little two to three inch chunks or slices out. So you follow that and then you just follow the white on the inside down and you go all the way around with that. Sharp knife is always nice. With whatever you're doing, it makes it so much easier. Um, people are scared of it, but actually, if you don't have to apply as much pressure to it, it keeps it a lot safer. All right, so this rind, I'm gonna toss this away. That's all gonna get into the yard waste. And you may see, you may miss a couple of spots around here. You can just hold that and just take your knife and clean that up. Because the white part's gonna be a little more bitter, like so. And so now that we have that, a nice, peeled watermelon. Go ahead and cut that straight in half, like so. Set one side aside. Then I'm gonna take my knife, now be careful when you do this. It's watermelon, so you don't have to apply a lot of pressure. Hold my hand on top and I'm gonna cut this straight in half, like so. Rotate it. And now I'm gonna go and make about one inch 
slices all the way through. Take your time, like so. Now rotate it and follow that one inch pattern again. So to reiterate, we went all the way through sideways, halfway, horizontally, rotated it, sliced through one inch like that, rotate it again, now we go through. And now you will end up with perfect little watermelon cubes. And for this recipe, we're looking for about four cups or so of watermelon. You can go more, you can go less depending on, but just utilize this as a base for your recipe. And that's the one thing that we always like to impress upon people is that don't let cooking intimidate you. What you have is what you have and make it work for you. Like if you don't have one ingredient out of this recipe, totally fine to just not utilize that one and skip it. Um, in this recipe, we're also gonna use jalapeno. If you don't like it spicy, you don't have to make it spicy. This is totally gonna work. So now we have our nicely cubed watermelon here. Matt, can I interrupt jalapeno. for a second? Yes. Um, so there's a question about how do you select a watermelon that you know is going to be sweet and flavorful and where do you go? <laughs> uh, well, of course, you know, I like to try and support farmers markets when you when you find them, um, but you can also find them at the local groceries. Uh, a lot. There's so many, uh, I, you know, what do we call them? Wives tales, uh, nuances that you see people in the grocery stores smelling, scratching knocking is probably the main one um, and i think the knocking is the one that i i have gone to but the only thing with knocking is like i can't tell you the the tone that you're looking for it's not like you go and knock and find the one that's like a perfect you know b sharp or something like that uh, but you i think you find the one that just kind of resonates right like that the water carries that that knock all the way through definitely do not get one when i was picking these there was a few that were a little soft i would probably stay away from that. Um, I always find that those are a little more sour, but you want one that's firm. Uh, you want to be able to knock it. And then some people say, look for the sun spot because then you know that one was out in the sun, meaning that yellow spot is not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. Uh, it doesn't need to be green all the way around because sometimes they say if it was green all the way around, it was kind of in the shade underneath something. So if you see that yellow, uh, that means it was in the sun, which makes it sweeter. Uh, the other trick to this, since we're putting this in a salad, if you taste this watermelon now, uh, which I'll do, oh, it's really sweet. I did good. Um, but if for some reason in the salad, it's not, you can sweeten this a little bit with either sugar. My preference would be, uh, honey, um, since it's not refined, or you could do something like, um, uh, one of the plant-based uh, like agave nectar or something like that. So that's kind of watermelon 101. Firm, knock, you wanna hear that resonate really nicely. Uh, look for a sunspot. And I think those are my, 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 my three little points on choosing watermelon. So Thank you. yes, no problem. Back to the jalapeno here. I like this, it plays nice with the watermelon. Um, I go through and just take the stem off right here like so, you end up with this. Then I'll slice long ways through the jalapeno. So then you end up with this, okay? If you like a little spice, but are afraid of the jalapeno, you can then take a spoon and scoop this out, right? Just take your time because you don't wanna splash jalapeno juice in your eye. Don't believe me, ask me, it's not fun. So this would be your mild version of a jalapeno. This would be your spicier version of a jalapeno with the seeds still in it. Choose your poison and you can go from there. If you don't like any spice, if black pepper offends you, uh, just leave it out. You don't need to put that in there. But now I'm gonna go through and thinly slice the jalapeno. Straight down. And Joe, if there's any questions while I'm slicing or doing, please feel free to lob those up. I don't see any now, but what's your dog's name? Uh, the, the studio dog, his name, of course, is uh, Boudreaux, which is kind of like uh, a Creole term for Bubba or a Cajun term for Bubba. Uh, you always hear the jokes like, you know, so-and-so walked into a bar, 
Well, down in New Orleans, it's, you know, Boudreaux and his friend Thibodeau walked into a bar. Uh, and that's kind of the joke. So he lives up to his silly name of Boudreaux. He is definitely 75% clown, 25% Irish water spaniel. Uh, he just heard me say his name. So he's going to come for another drive by and probably bring you a toy. Uh, so right now you see we have the jalapeno in there on top of the watermelon, nicely cubed. Now, lime juice. This is key. Watermelon and lime were made to go together like salt and pepper. Um, I love it. Even if you are just eating watermelon fresh, a little squeeze of lime. Oh, so much better. Take your limes, two limes, roll them out on your board and just cut them straight in half. And we're going to take the juice of both of these. The juicier, the better. Oh, I'm salivating already. So lime juice there. Second lime here. Like so. My right hand is definitely stronger than my left hand today for some reason. All right. So we got to that. Give it a little toss. If you don't feel comfortable tossing, use a spoon and stir. Made a little splash there. Chefs are people too. Like so. All right. Red onion. So you got the stem root. We only need about a quarter of this for the amount, but this is just a little addition. So took the stem end off, root end is still attached. Cut side down, so now this onion does not wobble. Cut right in half. So many times I see people doing scratch and sniff, right? Like now that this onion is cut, I can see all the layers. I can find that outer layer very easily and just peel that off. I see too many people, and I say too many because it's like, oh, you see people and it's like, there's a more efficient way to do it. If you have a whole onion, do not try and peel that without cutting it in half. Because you sit there and you, I call this the scratch and stiff where you see people scratching that outside, trying to break the paper and pull it. Not necessary. Go ahead and take that uh, stem side off, cut it directly in half, and then you can find that outer layer of paper and then you end up with this nice clean onion. So for this one, I'm gonna use quarter of this onion. So I'll cut it in half again. Set this aside like so. And then all I want to do is thinly slice and get little rings of onion. The thinner, the better. This onion plays nice with the watermelon, but if you put too much, it can overpower the watermelon. Like There's that. a question um, about whether or not you soak the red onions prior to putting it in the salad. I will show you. Yes, you can salt and soak the red onions, but what I like to do is put them in a little bowl. And you can, when you do this salad again, you can start with the red onion. I take a little bit more lime juice, or we can actually use just a little red wine vinegar and just sprinkle that over the top. And that was probably a teaspoon of red wine vinegar, a pinch of salt and then give this just a little bit of stir. But I like the question about, do you soak the onion? Yes, you can soak them, but if you soak them, what I would also do is uh, sprinkle them with a little salt and you know let them soak for at least 20 minutes or so if you do it that way. Once that's done, give them a quick rinse. They will uh, lose some of that astringency, I guess you call it, some of that sulfur taste, that burn that you get from there, and it mellows it out. Uh, the other thing that it will do is it also seasons that onion a little bit. That little bit of salt will stay there, uh, but it won't overpower it. So with that little bit of red wine vinegar, it was like a teaspoon for what we sliced here. You can see the whole onion has a slight color change. So it's starting that whole process. Um, it's basically a uh, quick pickle is what we're doing on here, but a quick fresh pickle. So we will just set this aside and add that to our watermelon salad at the end. So, so far we have the cubed watermelon. We have the sliced jalapeno right in there. And you can see it's already releasing a lot of moisture um, in there. And we squeeze the juice of two limes in here. Like so, you got the red onion, jalapeno, 
All right, let's talk about herbs. One of the herbs that I love to put into here is just a little bit of dill. But when you use dill, mint likes to play really nicely with dill in a summer salad. Again, dill can overpower. So you just want enough in there that it's like, oh, what is that? That is really nice versus, oh my gosh, I'm eating a, uh, you know, a kosher pickle or something like that. That's not what we're going for. Uh, we want just that nice pop of freshness. So I would say probably for this size salad, about two stems worth of dill. We'll match that with two stems worth of mint right here. Mint's also another one that works well when it's, you know, a uh, best supporting actor and not uh, center stage because it can, too much mint is not a good thing, um, but just the right amount. You need, it needs to be a supporting actor or actress on that. So we got mint, dill, and I always like to bump it up with just a little bit of parsley right here. And this is gonna be our herb accompaniment to our salad. So if you, if you notice what I did there, I had all my mint there. I kind of gathered and I'm slowly kind of rolling everything together. And as I do that, I will fold it in and I'm just gonna run my knife through like so. So that was dill, mint, and a little bit of fresh leaf parsley or flat leaf parsley, not fresh leaf. Oh, that smells so good. There's I wish you question. guys were cooking along. Hey, go ahead. Yeah, I wish we could smell too. Um, do, you <laughs> use the, do you use the lime zest? You can use the lime zest. Um, that's a whole another addition to this. But yes, if you wanted to zest your lime first, great. It adds that nice citric, uh, citrus oil to the mix on that. For this one, I just, uh, because we have all of the herbs and everything else going in there, and we have a lot of lime juice and we did a touch of red wine vinegar here. I didn't go with the zest, just not to overpower that limeness. Um, but yes, you can totally use the lime zest. So, all right. So now we have our herbs here, which was the dill, mint, and flat leaf parsley. We're just going to add that to our watermelon. We're going to add the rest there. Give it a quick stir with our spoon. Like so. Now we will add our red onion to that and all the vinegar that goes with it. Stir that in there. And to complete this salad, we're gonna use a little bit of feta cheese. So I'm gonna put that down. And I would say for this, it's probably about a half a cup of feta cheese that we're gonna use. And as you see, I'm eyeballing because feta cheese and finishing like seasoning, salt and pepper, that's always to taste. If you're a cheese lover, go for it. If you want to put more feta than I did, knock your socks off. Like this is your salad. I'm just giving you a couple of little pointers to direct you in the right place. And there you have it. Like this is a fresh watermelon salad. I'll see if I can get you a close up on here just like that. And you can see how beautiful that is. Great fresh picnic, a little spin, a little bit more savory than what you want. When you taste this, I like to utilize the salt that's in the feta cheese um, for flavoring. Remember we salted the onions too. Um, and you have a lot of lime juice. So that acid also hits the same receptors as salt. So I'll always go back and I will get a bite that has a little bit of feta, a little bit of watermelon, basically a little bit of everything. And then you test it. Mm, so good. Well, that wasn't a TV bite. So <laughs> Joe, if you have a question, yeah, I need some time to chew. I was just gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a couple questions. If, if, folks, right. if folks don't like feta, is there another cheese that you can use is one question. You can use any cheese that you want. Like the reason I'm using feta one, I like the brininess of it, right? So you could use mozzarella with this. Um, if you use mozzarella, then you're gonna season a little bit more with salt, right? So just get that balance that's a, a, you know pleasing to your taste buds. Um, but feta I like because it's firm. 
Um, and it has a nice brininess to it. That's all I'm going for with that, but it's interchangeable. If you don't like fetid, please don't use it. It's like when people come up to the truck and they're like, Hey, uh, what's your favorite pole boy? And I said, well, classically it's shrimp, but, um, I'm a huge oyster fan. Like that is my ultimate sandwich. Um, and they're like, okay, well maybe I'll try it. I was like, well, do you like oysters? And they're like, no, I was like, well, don't get it. Like <laughs> just cause I like it doesn't mean you have to like it. Right. And especially not when it comes to oysters. So it's the same thing with cheese. If you don't like feta, find a cheese you like, right? Like any cheese is going to work. You could even shave Parmesan into this if you really wanted to, it will still be great. So it's just, the Fed is a suggestion, but you can take it down the path that you want to. Just keep in mind, compensate for uh, any differences in the salt content, because that's what really balances this dish out. Great. Just a couple more questions. Would this salad yeah. be good with a grilled flank steak with chimichurri sauce? That sounds good. Oh, yeah. Or, or would, would the herbs compete too much with each other? No, this would not compete. Like, I wish you could taste this salad because the herbs are just right there. That mint that dill is just a barely whisper. Um, it's like, hey guys, I'm here. But that's about it, right? It's not class clown. It doesn't, you know, run to the front of the stage. Um, and then the mint is that nice, fresh brightness, right? It plays really nice with the dill. The parsley, I think the parsley is always the unsung hero. Like it's such a great um, herb. I always recommend the flat leaf. Um, they do taste similarly. The reason I don't like the curly because those leaves are so curly that I can never get the sand out. And I am just so like, as soon as I bite into a grid of sand, I'm done. Uh, so I, that's the reason flat leaf is, is my, is my person. Um, so that's why I go to that, but this works well with, uh, that steak. Actually it, it's calling out for the steak. I might have to cook a steak tonight. So this might be one of my meat as a treat days, but nice. yes, this would work great. Okay, so this is this is a good relevant question. How long will this store before serving, especially if you're going to go on a picnic on a hot day like it might be tomorrow? What would you do? Yes. Uh, so what I would do, um, I would do you can do the onions and get those on the vinegar with the salt the day before. Uh, keep your cheese separate because then that you know that feta gets a little weird as it gets in that moisture. Uh, same thing with the um, I would do the cucumber and the jalapeno and keep that separate in a container. You can still put the lime juice on it, um, but it's gonna leach out a lot of liquid. So what I would do is don't throw the liquid away, but before you mix that salad, pour the liquid off into another container. Make sure that all ingredients are somewhat, you know, liquid less. I'm not gonna say dry because more watermelon should never be dry. Um, mix your salad, taste it, and then you can add some liquid back or you can just drink liquid as a power shot. All right. Fantastic. Uh, a couple more cheese related questions. Yeah. Um, how much, how much feta did you put in there? And also what would you replace uh, that's non-dairy? Oh, non-dairy replacements. Oh, I like that question. Um, I put about a half a cup um, in this salad. It was roughly four cups. Um, and I, and also Joe, I will send you this recipe and you can put it out there for people if that's a possibility. Um, or they can uh, contact us through social media or hit me up at Matthew at whereyatmat.com and I can send you the recipe as well. Um, but that was about a half a cup of um, feta cheese. Perfect, because I already promised folks the recipe. So we'll get that to them. <laughs> awesome. I think that was all of the questions. And just a time check, we're at 1230. Okay, perfect. Well, that's salad number one. A couple of additions to that. Let's say you did uh, the mozzarella cheese. One thing you can do, and I'm just looking at it now because this is going to go into our next salad, is you can also offset some of that natural brininess with olives. And these are Kalamata olives. That actually plays really nicely with the sweet tangy-ness um, of this salad. So that one's that. The second dish that I'm going to do for you guys that I love to bring to summer events, especially as we get more and more corn out there, is a fresh corn slaw. Now, like we did before with the red onion, we're going to utilize lime juice and vinegar in there to kind of brighten this up. Part of the slaw is gonna have a, uh, the red cabbage in there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm only gonna use a quarter of this. So I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna put my knife through there. We're gonna go halfway like so. 
And the reason I'm starting with this is um, we're gonna also use the acid to kind of do a quick pickle on this. So I wanna give that a second to do its thing. The easiest way to cut, uh, so now we have a quarter of a red cabbage. Go ahead and take the core out of, out of it. Be careful with your knife and put it on its side. That core straight out. Now you'll see all the layers that you have in there. What I like to do is find the outer layer that's still flat, separate that, way easier to deal with that than this whole thing here, and then keep this one the way it is. So then I push this down, keep it flat, and then just as thin as you can, take your knife, and make little slices. As you get to the end, square it up again, right? Like now this is the same width. So I just did a quick little rotation on my board and follow through nice and even. You may get to the end and rotate again, whatever it takes on that. All right, so now we have the red cabbage. This guy, same thing, just come through. Once I get it square, and this is what I mean by square, it's no longer like a triangle. I turn it and come straight over. Any questions while I'm slicing, Joe? I don't see any questions, but are there any stories you want to share from back home or Juneteenth? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's it's amazing how far we've come and this, you know, feels like this short time, right? Like. I think the the whole national awakening uh, for people out outside of people of color was the whole George Floyd incident, right? And so to see how far we've come, and now that we're actually getting you know Juneteenth as a national holiday, that's just so encouraging. Um, you know, we still have a long way to go, uh, but we're getting there, right? Like I think I was listening to. Um, a panel yesterday on this and somebody made an analogy that really stuck home with me is people are like, yeah, but you know, like for, I'm from the South. So you hear a lot of interesting arguments, uh, but you know, people are like, yeah, but you know, there is no racism. Thing. That's one that's wrong. Uh, you know, and it's like, but you have all the rights and it's like, well, there's still a long way to go. And you got to look at it like this. It's like racism is kind of like a diet, like during COVID, you know, I know I did. I gained, you know, some extra pounds, right? And it was pretty easy because we eat whatever's in the house, you know, we eat for emotional support sometimes. But try taking those pounds away. It takes way more time to get rid of that poundage, right? And that's kind of the way to look at racism. Yeah, I may know that, yes, I need to lose weight, but just saying that doesn't do it, right? Like I have to put the effort in, I have to put the work in to lose this weight. And part of that weight that we're all living with is racism. And I think the more that we bring people to awareness of it, uh, the, the more it becomes front and center. And so many times uh, we're just not aware that it, 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 it is. Um, and, and I saw it um, in my son's class with how teachers were dealing with the George Floyd incident last year. And it wasn't until I actually sat down with them um, or actually not sat down, but a Zoom call kind of like we're doing here. And I was like, hey, why didn't you guys address this? You know, why did you shut down a kid in class that asked about police violence as being disruptive, right? And I, luckily for homeschooling, I was able to hear that. And I asked my son, um, he's 13. And I was like, hey, why, why did she shut that kid down? She said, he said, I, you know, because he was being disruptive. I would say, well, why is asking about a current event um, as big as the George Floyd incident, you know, the murder of George Floyd, um, an issue? And, you know, I said, you know, hit her up in the chat. He very respectfully did so. And then she got on him and I was like, okay, don't worry, buddy. I got this. And so uh, requested a, uh, a meeting with him. And I was like, hey, do you realize that, you know, this is something beyond politics. Like this is something that should be addressed in any school, whether public or private. And, uh, you know, she's like, well, I have to wait for, you know, permission. I said, permission from who? You know, she's like, well, you know, we have to wait for guideline from the school board. And I said, well, actually, why are you doing that? Like, if you see something like racism happening and you see you have these young minds that want to discuss this, what is wrong with a, a discussion monitored by somebody that they respect in the community like your teacher? 
Um, and, I, you know, and, and it, she kind of started getting it. And I said, do you realize, and you don't even put it in perspective. I said, do you realize that by doing that, I'm not saying you're racist, but you're contributing to systemic racism, like racism that's baked into a system that you don't even realize you're doing it anymore. And as soon as I said that, it was silent. And then the tears came and I was like, hey, listen, I'm not saying that, but do you realize that that's what it is? It's like, it's just hidden. And until somebody brings it to the surface, do you actually see it? You know, and it's like, be aware, like so many things out there are like that. And I, I can't tell you, uh, it, you know, it changed me too. And it's like, I try to be aware of things that I may not uh you know, I might have a blind spot too, but I always want to feel like I'm open to it. So it's okay if there's part, parts of your past, right? Like, but make it right right now. And that's, that's, that's my, my Juneteenth soapbox for now. <laughs> Is that the direction we wanted to go in, Joe? <laughs> well, thank you. You know, actually in, in reading about the, the federal holiday, they were talking about the murder of George Floyd being a catalyst for change uh, and getting mm -hmm. the, the holiday recognized. And this is just, um, you know, a great opportunity to begin those dialogues. So thank you. There's, there's, there's love in the chat about uh, your analogy and your approach. So thank you. Um, great. Switching gears just a little bit, um, a seven. We have a question from a seven-year-old. Um, okay, I who love wants that. To know, <laughs> how did you? <laughs> how did you start your business? I want to open up my food truck stand or my right? food stand. Yes. Oh man, yeah. We we can chat for days. A little a little. Uh, is it a a guy or a lady? I'm not sure. Margaret. 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 All right. Perfect. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was uh. I'd been cooking around in different restaurants for a long time and uh, it just felt like it was the right time. Um, there was a lot going on in my life uh, that made me not want to keep working for somebody else and start my own thing. Um, and I saw a niche for the style of food that I grew up with and loved, you know, the Creole style and started talking to my dad and my grandfather at the time. And they were like, Hey man, we believe in you. We support you, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's more attainable than a brick and mortar uh, from my financial perspective. Uh, so I started recipe testing. I dialed what I wanted my menu to look like, researched, you know, logos, you know, business plan, everything else. Um, got the okay from dad gramps. They're like, let's do this. Right. And, you know, remotely they were so supportive as was my whole family. Um, and we just went for it. And, uh, you know, but I think for someone starting out, especially a seven year old, it's like, uh, you know, you can start off with simple plans, like whatever you want to do. It's like get organized in your mind first. Uh, the other two cents in that is don't uh, get paralyzed by overanalyzing either, like organize as much as you can. But at a certain point, you're going to have to look at yourself as a fledgling bird and take that jump, right? Like I've prepared as much as I can without knowing the factors and you'll never know those other variables um, that I just said factors uh, until you start, right? But make sure you keep an open mind. Things will come up that you didn't plan for, but you know what, that's the fun part of business. I love a challenge and every day that something happens, I don't get mad. It's like, well, how do we fix it, right? Like I understand that happened, but how do we fix it? Where do we go from here, guys? You know, and it's, it's always a team effort um, and being surrounded by a great team like I have um, with me, uh, you know, I feel like the sky's the limit, but that's the key plan. Don't overanalyze to paralysis. Be willing to take that leap. Know that issues are going to come up and just be open to fixing them. And uh, every day is new and it's a lot of fun. Thank you for sharing that. Um, any plans yeah. to open a brick and mortar? Uh, well, we sold our uh, restaurant Rue in 2018, uh, which was in hindsight, you know, a very brilliant idea that we had <laughs> on the heels of COVID. Uh, I don't know, like, I feel like there's other way. I feel like our, our industry as, you know, the whole person of color movement within our nation is, you know, at a, a, a change, right? It's at a catalyst of, of growth, of change, which is great. Um, I feel like our industry is too, as far as the restaurant industry, I think there's a lot of different ways um, to feed the masses, feed the community. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be a brick and mortar for me again. So that's a, that's a TBD answer <laughs> coming up. So 
Thank As you. we're That's taking questions, I just want to do one quick thing. I had this cabbage sliced, and I'm going to add about a quarter cup of vinegar to this. And I just want to start that pickle process that we've talked about before. All right, Joe, you can keep a question. A pinch of salt. I'm going oh, to actually, stir. there's no questions at the moment. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to just give this a quick stir. This salad comes together really quickly too. This one would work well with the steak. It would work well with chicken. It would work well with pork. Works well on its own. Um, it's very versatile. So we have our cabbage. I'm going to go ahead and take the other quarter of our red onion here. Same thing. Slice that down just like we did before. And you can do whatever slice you want. I like these little quarter moons. Just keep them nice and thin. And this is gonna go in with the cabbage because I don't like that onion burn. So I'm gonna add it to the vinegar and the salt, like so. And stir that in. You can see the foundation is starting. The cabbage, which I love, especially once it gets that vinegar, it changes its beautiful magenta color in any, any shape of acid is added to it. So that could be lime juice, red wine vinegar, any kind of uh, vinegar. How but, much red wine vinegar? Uh, that was about a quarter cup. That was a quarter of a uh, red cabbage, quarter head, uh, about a quarter cup of vinegar, and roughly a quarter of a red onion. I would say probably a half cup of red onion because onions change uh, size depending on the time of year. So I'd say probably a half a cup. That was probably at least a full packed cup of the red cabbage if you want an actual measurement on that. And then we have our corn. If you've never shucked corn, not hard at all. You have the top here where the silk threads come out. And if you didn't know on corn, these silk threads, each one of these threads actually attaches to a, a kernel in the corn. Don't ask me how I know that. I may be a food geek and love food science, but that's what they're there for. You just so blew just my mind with it. that. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Just grab it and just pull straight down and reveal this beautiful corn here. This is the white corn. It's coming into season here. You're gonna start seeing some Yakima. Once you have this, the easiest way to get the silk off is a dry towel. Um, and just use the towel, roll, rotate the corn and wipe it down with the towel and then clean your board. Silk's not gonna kill you. It's just the texture that I don't really desire. All right, so now you end up with the corn. You can do this with two heads or one head. Put that in there. Safest way to uh, take the corn, off, the corn kernels off is, I like to hold this on a board and just, Run my knife straight down, rotate, run the knife straight down, just like so. And then you end up with that. If you uh, make stocks at home or anything like that, this makes a great stock. Just put that in some cold water, bring it up to a boil, simmer for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, you can put any kind of like the onion scrap, like if I have any onion pieces, I'll throw in there. Um, it makes a nice, quick stock. I'm just going to slide this into my bowl. I'm going to do that with the second ear. How are we doing on time, Joe? We are at 12.45. All right, perfect. So I'll do the second ear really quick, a little bit faster. Just grab it, peel it down. Wipe it down like so. Clean my board. All right. Just take all of those kernels off. If you notice, I just built it right on top of that cabbage. I didn't mix it in yet. Let me get those rest of them in there. While you're doing that, folks are admiring your corn. And um, <laughs> there's a question about, um, did you get that corn from a farmer's market? Uh, I got this from one of my local grocery stores. 
Okay. I, I didn't go to the farmer's market today, although you're starting to see it in farmer's markets. Along now that same have, line. Go ahead. Oh, along that same line, uh, what's your preferred local farmer's market? Oh, whichever one's open that day. Like I always pull up the, um, you know, the, the farmer's market kind of location guide, depending on uh, which ones we go to. Um, I love the Ballard market. It's probably one of the bigger, more consistent markets, and it's usually year round. Um, but that's on, I believe, Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. I can't I always get it confused, but the university market is great. Um, my local market is the Wallingford market, um, which I love to visit that one. Um, but you know, I go the circuit. Like if I'm in a new neighborhood and I, I see on the, you know, the there's a, a calendar you can Google that shows you where the farmer's markets are. And pretty much every day you can find one. But if I'm in a new area, I love to stop by farmer's markets. I don't really have a favorite one as much as I just love farmer's markets. Someone just helped us out. Ballard is on Sunday. University is on Saturday. Yep. Um, there was another question about uh, what you would use. Um, oh, the stock. Uh, what do you use your stock for? Oh, so many things. Um, like I'll use the stock uh, to make uh, soups with. I make, you know, sauces with. Like I, I've gotten into a lot of the uh, plant-based kind of cream sauce, which, you know, you use cashew nuts. But instead of water when I use it, um, when I make it, I will use like that stock. Um, and once you make the stock, I usually just put it in some of the the quart containers that you get from, you know, to go restaurants or anything like that, put it in the fridge, label and date it. And usually you get about a week out of it. Um, but substitute for anything like for water. Like if you're making rice, you can use the stock. If you're making like a grain or quinoa or something like that, use the stock instead of water. So just use it in place of water, just adds another layer of flavor and you're good to go. All right, so now we have the corn in the bowl. So now I'm gonna use about a half cup of Kalamata olives. You can use your favorite olive. It doesn't have to be Kalamata. I always buy them pitted. I hate pitting olives. And just run your knife through it. You can use these whole if you want. But just run the knife through really quick. And these go straight into the bowl. All right. And then the piece that I love is pickled peppers. You can pickle your own, it's pretty simple, or you can buy them pre-pickled. These are just like little Fresnos, like so. And again, on these, this will be about a half a cup. You can save the brine for the end, and I'll show you why. As we taste it, if we think it needs a little more acid, I'm just running my knife through that just to break down the bigger ones right on top. And now we're to our herbs. I love herbs. They add such a depth of flavor. Um, people are intimidated sometimes by herbs, but they're super simple. I think corn always calls for cilantro. If you're not a cilantro fan, utilize basil, right? Like you don't have to utilize, use something you don't like. But if, if you like it, oh, I love it. So we're going to go cilantro. This time we're going basil. Something like that, probably about six to eight leaves of basil. I'm gonna go a little bit more. And then I like to kick it off. And you'll see, I do this a lot with a little bit of mint because it gives you that little, oh, what is that brightness, right? Like not a lot, but just a little bit. This is also the secret. Mint is also the secret to uh, my marinara sauce in tomato. Just a little bit of mint in there with the basil brings it right there. So, so far we have, cilantro, basil, mint. Again, I'm gonna roll this up like that, like a little pocket, and then just run your knife through there, take your time, fingertips are good. All right, clean that up. Those herbs smell so good, right can on take, there. <clears throat> can you take a question? Yeah, go for it. What do you like to eat with the salads for protein? I'm particularly interested in meat-free options in addition to cheese. Ah, meat-free. Uh, this would be great with uh, like a grilled tofu, like a charred grilled tofu. Um, and if depending on um, 
how much you've been doing tofu. It's always great when you get the tofu out of the liquid to take, uh, put it in between either two plates or two sheet trays or something like that and weight it down, right? Like when I say weight it down, I'm talking like two, you know, big coffee table book styles, put it on there, weight it down for at least 20 minutes and get as much of that liquid out of that, out of that as possible. Then at that point, uh, you can oil it down and grill it in like super high heat, super high heat, but make sure it's oiled down, grill it, season it, salt, pepper, then cut it into cubes. Um, that would be a great uh, protein to go with this. Um, and if the other one that this works really well with, and what I always like to substitute in my diet would be uh, a seafood right now. We're in salmon season. This is beautiful with salmon. Um, but then I would say probably the tofu side or the salmon side of things would be the two. This also, I mean, this is going to work with chicken, steak, you name it. Um, but those are the two that come to mind first. So now that we have the salad, we're just going to mix all of this together. You can see that beautiful magenta color on that cabbage. You can see the onions are playing nice with it. Those peppers the olives, and when you stir, always get to the bottom and get those guys that have been hanging out in the marinade up to the top. Let everybody get into that pool, so to speak. Any other questions on that, Joe? Not at the moment. And we're awesome. at 12.53. Uh, Look at that, 12.53. And you have your nice salad right there. Look how beautiful that color and texture is. I'm gonna utilize my spoon and take a little bite. Mm. That is so good. And if you notice, I did not add more salt to this. There was salt in the initial um, cabbage and red onion, but just a little pinch. The Kalamata olives, add that nice burst of brininess to it that then quickly is cooled by the cabbage, the corn, and then the herbs take over. The pickled peppers are really nice. They add just another different kind of sweetness and corn sweetness. And I just like that. Like there is a party in my mouth right now. And that's what it's all about. Like these two, super fresh, super simple, super clean, super healthy. Can we say super again? Probably. Um, but yeah, try it out. If you don't have one of these ingredients, substitute something else, right? Like if you need crispy crunch from the cabbage and you don't have cabbage, I mean, you could use lettuce if you want. Um, you could use a fresh squash in place of this cabbage, like a zucchini, um, a squash. I just did a big dinner uh, Wednesday night where I used the uh, chayote squash or melatone better known as. Um, and it was so good. I wouldn't cook them at all. I would just slice them down, get a nice, you know, whether it's the half moons, whatever is easiest knife work, about a eighth of an inch thick, throw them in there fresh, season it up, and that's going to work just the same. There's a, a similar question to the previous salad. How, how would you store this? And would the cabbage color the corn or is that an issue? Never an issue because it's not going to affect the flavor. Uh, there could be some uh, color sharing is what I always like to call it. Uh, in the bowl, but it's, 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 it's an aesthetic thing. It's not a, uh, you know, it's, it's not a danger uh, thing at all. Um, easiest way to store this is an airtight container. This would probably last, I mean, that cabbage, because it's not cooked, it's only um, getting uh, kind of that brine or maceration by the acid. Like you can easily get probably three to five days out of this. Awesome. So we're getting a lot of people uh, feeling pretty jealous right now <laughs> and hungry. <laughs> um, and, and folks Everybody that want me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thanks a lot. Um, there's folks that want to come see you. Um, uh, can you tell yes. us how we can find you? Yes, yes. You can find the easiest way to find us. So our, our company is called Where You At, Matt, mobile restaurant, better known as a food truck. Um, on there, though, we do more New Orleans street food style. Like this is kind of like the one-offs that we do for catering, special events, and everything else. 
Um, we also have a company called Chef Box Live where we teach a lot of cooking classes. Uh, my buddy Sam from Sound Excursions and I created that for our COVID uh, pivot or project, however you want to call it. Um, and so that's where we do more of this style of cooking. Um, but yeah, come see us at the truck, some New Orleans street food, which is, you know, the pull boys, the jambalayas, the gumbo, um, the beignets, the pies. Uh, we run specials there, um, but it's all super delicious.